Okay, yes, there you go. Welcome to Comedy Playhouse. I'm Bruce Pieschke. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the fire marshal wants you to know that there are exits at the front and back of the theater. The restrooms are back there. There's water back there. Also in the front we have concessions. There's wine. There is chips and there's candy and there's sodas and waters. Those are all a dollar. Buy something. The wine, of course, is free. Cheers to my uh, comedy playhouse friends. It's on the house. Drink a lot of it. The more you drink, the funnier we are. <laughs> Especially me, because now I have to tell a joke. <laughs> but first of all, if you see what you like here, tell your friends, because that is the way that theater in Tucson succeeds, is by word of mouth. Now, I have a joke that I've been telling. I'm not the greatest joke teller. I've heard some dissension in the ranks about my joke. But it's not very good. So I'm going to bring somebody else out to tell a joke to you now. David? <laughs> David will now entertain you with a joke. Go ahead, David. All right, so a polar bear walks into a bar, and he sits down at the bar, and looks at the bartender and says, hi, I'll have a gin. And tonic. And so the bartender goes, oh, sure, yeah, no problem. What's with the long pause? And the polar bear goes, I don't know. I've had them all my life. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, David. <laughs> that one wasn't approved by me, but it was still good. <laughs> all right, so we are going to be presenting to you today Murder on Vampire Island. Enjoy the show. Now enjoy the show. <laughs> Summer's gonna be like. Incompetence colored by stupidity. <laughs> a whole lot of stupidity. Lord, what brings me back year after year? It must be a masochist. To Vampire Island Theater. <laughs> Ugh, yet another summer directing a season long play about vampires, werewolves, and zombies to boring, demanding guests. Six days a week for the entire summer. Oh, you go Dracula. <laughs> <laughs> Up to hell, there are no children this time. To no children! <laughs> Ugh. I wonder when the others are going to get here. I wonder where that caretaker Trasker is 
lazy man? Well, I guess I'll see what instructions have been left for me this year. Oh God, I hate that trip. <laughs> <laughs> the worst part about this gig is a boat ride over from the mainland. And who left this suitcase in the middle of the floor? Probably the same idiot who left his luggage all over the dock. Don't worry, I'll get it. <laughs> and there's a dirty glass on my bar? Oh. Ah, one stupid thing after another. Oh, okay. Yeah. No. Should have known it was your crap on the dock. I mean, you always get here first. <laughs> and, <laughs> good to see you. Good to see you too, Vinny. Sorry, I'm a little distracted. I had a bit of a scare back there. Yeah, did you have an accident? I thought I heard something fall. No, not quite an accident. Could have been, though. Yeah, I was reading the envelope of instructions that were left for me, not paying attention to where I was going. You know that big chair you always stand on to set lights for the seance scene? Yeah, what about it? Well, it was moved from its regular spot, and I ran into it. Ooh, that must have left a mark. Mark? <laughs> <laughs> That's a big piece of furniture. I mean, geez. I can't figure out who would have moved it. That's right, we're the only ones here, and that's only for three months a year. Yeah, well, I went to drag it back where it belongs, and the thing fell apart. Damn thing just collapsed on me. Huh. I suppose it's a good thing it had been out of place. If it had been in its usual spot, one of us... Uh, that would be me. We ...would have tried using it like a step stool while we... Me. ...were setting up. Or one of the guests could have sat in it. Ooh, somebody could have got hurt. Yeah, worse than that, we could have been sued. Uh, the place is falling down around our ears. I wonder how many more summers Vampire Island Theater has left in her. Oh, it'll keep going, as long as people are willing to pay for a spooky one-week Transylvania experience. <laughs> as long as the owners keep making money at it. Oh. Did you ever meet the owners? Nah, all my dealings have been with the theatrical agency. Uh, aren't you a... <laughs> aren't you a little curious? I mean, who owns the house, the whole island? Not particularly. As long as my paychecks come on time all summer, I don't care who owns it. <laughs> bet you Trasker knows. You know, he lives on the island all year round. I bet he has his friends over here when we're not scheduled. He has no friends. And he's got his own place on the other side of the island. I mean, they're using the tennis courts, the, the swimming pool. Uh, who's who's going to know? Who's, to, who's there to take care of the caretaker? Mm -hmm. Well, yes. never seen any evidence he was living here, except... Nah. Can you imagine anybody wanting to spend a week with werewolves and vampires? Actors playing werewolves and vampires. Eh, stupid sort of vacation, uh, but people seem willing to pay for it. Well, it's a lot more fun for me than selling hardware. That's right, that's what you do off-season. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it must be a real big step down for you being a, an apartment complex manager, after being the star of that little TV show, what was the name of that? Undercover Sasquatch. <laughs> <laughs> 27 years ago. 20 years. 20 years ago. <laughs> of course, uh, as I'm sure you well remember, back then I was a member of the nationally acclaimed Brighton Shakespeare Players. <laughs> Although I haven't worked with them in a long time. Uh, well, let's face it, we, we all do something non-acting related nowadays to make some money. Oh, except for Layla. <laughs> She's a perfect example of those who can do and those who can't teach. <laughs> <laughs> well, we all have to put food on the table. Ah, but this, this keeps my hand in acting. This is what I was trained to do, what I was born to do. Alas. There's not much call for Shakespearean actors these days. No gig that's going to pay as much as this one. Any of, any of the others here yet? Well, the, the cabin cruiser's tied up at the dock, so I thought it must have been Trasker I heard upstairs earlier. No, yeah, who knows? The owner's hired two boats this year, so I don't know. Maybe he's back on the mainland trying to pick up local women. Local, local women. women. <laughs> <laughs> You don't seem the type to me to be pick up, picking up women local or otherwise. Huh? 
We're the blow-up dog kind of guy. <laughs> you know, he usually ferries us over from the mainland. I wonder why I didn't do it this year. Eh, doesn't matter. Anyway, the usual envelope of instructions was waiting for me this year. Uh, yeah, it looks like the same cast is on board for the summer. Uh, Umberto is going to be playing uh, Caspian, Cornelius uh, Suter. Yeah, you remember him from last year, uh, don't you? Uh, not looking forward to working with him again. Yeah. Kind of a prick. Yeah. Would not take direction. Yeah. And some uh, small changes I well, asked for. Yeah. And there's the usual <laughs> list of housekeeping duties for yeah. us to perform when we're uh, yeah. not doing their character work and the list of guests. Any children? Uh, don't see any. Oh, well, thank God. You said it, little <laughs> monsters. <laughs> Baby Trasker doesn't even work here anymore. You know, to tell you the truth, he always kind of gave me the creeps. Mm. Like the kind of guy that would rescue little baby bunnies and then eat them for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't see a tear in my eye if he was gone. Yeah. Good boat captain in rough water, though. Oh, that's right. With this new guy, I thought halfway across I was going to revisit breakfast. <laughs> and you know, he told us, he told me we we're going to be in for some rough weather for the next few weeks. Ah. He said we may get stranded on the island. No way for anyone to get on. No way for anyone to get off. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> but what are we going to do? Uh, to entertain the guests if the weather stays bad all summer. I mean, there'll be no tennis courts, no swimming pool, uh, no walks in the woods, there'll be no uh, usual touristy shopping on the mainland. Yeah, well, there's the media room, stack old movies they can watch. Uh, I brought some DVDs of the 20th anniversary director's cut edition of Undercover Sasquatch. <laughs> <laughs> Board games, cards. <laughs> maybe, we could, maybe we could organize a, a poker tournament. You know, we might have to expand our vignettes. Oh, I'm excited about that. Yeah. I've been adding some new nuances to my character, Ivor. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been watching this medical TV reality show, and these are some conditions that, that my character might actually have. Um, hemophilia, uh, hematopoiesis, hermaphrodism. Oh, man. <laughs> you know, and I'm excited about that great big change that we talked yeah, about. Our movie yes. star returns yes. for another year. <laughs> <laughs> it's so lovely to see both of you. I can't wait to hear what you've been up to since September. And Mark, I want to talk about my part as Hortense, the witchy housekeeper. I feel like it can be expanded to include sparrows and incantations. Great to see you too, Anne-Marie. There'll be plenty of time to review the stage business once the others get here. Oh. Why don't you save your enthusiasm for the first rehearsal? <laughs> No, oh, I do need to talk to you later, though. About? Something the agency asked me to look into. I'll talk to you later. All right, Mr. Director. Uh, Count Dracula, Lord of the Castle. I think there's been a little... Yeah, we'll talk later, later. Vinny. <laughs> <laughs> when I'm going off to find my room. Is Cammy going to be here again this year? We made great roommates last year. Uh, no. Well, maybe. Actually, um, she hasn't definitely confirmed. Yeah. Uh, great to know there are going to be some last-minute casting glitches. It'll make my job so much easier, you know, as, as the yeah, new essential she'll call me this evening. That's all candy, always keeping all the irons in the fire, waiting for the best thing to come along. Yeah, well, if she does come this year, you won't be rooming with her again. Uh, you'll be sharing with a new member of our little troop, Emily. She's 18, 19 years old. I haven't actually met her yet. Um, I owed her dad a favor. Uh, but she, she doesn't have any acting experience. Uh, oh, Mom! So I, I, I want you to take her under your wing, Anne-Marie. You and Layla can give her pointers. Layla's a drama teacher, after all. Her dad said she's suffering from poor self-image, low self-esteem. She's been hanging around with some night people, whatever that means. Ooh, night people! Uh, could be musicians, you know, a band. Oh, those musicians, they're a sorry lot. With the drugs and the sex and the alcohol. <laughs> well, they have no uh, sense of reality. Yeah. Or mortality. Yeah. Or morality. <laughs> Acting is part of the therapy recommended to help her overcome her issues. Oh. Uh, look, I owed the guy a favor, so that's that. All right? I'm not thrilled to have a newbie in the cast, though. What part is she going to be playing, Mark? Oh, um, 
Milo and Stefan. I, I'm sorry, I didn't quite hear that. What was that? He said Milo and Stefan. Milo is a werewolf and Stefan is a zombie. Brains. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not so sure it's a good idea to have an inexperienced actor with two roles. Roles I haven't been even been told about yet. Well, uh... I don't understand how playing a male gardener in a male stable head is going to help a young woman with her self-esteem problems. And besides, she'll be so busy doing her menial tasks. You know, like mopping the floors and changing linens and washing the windows and... She'll be like a regular Cinderella. <laughs> you knew about this before I did, Emery. What does this mean, Mark? What does this mean? Oh, Vicky, have I been caught telling tales out of school again? If I had known, I wouldn't have said a word. Not one word. I hope I didn't cause any problems. Well, I'm going to toggle off and find my room. I cannot have the room next to the bathroom again this year. There's too much traffic, and every time you go to wash your hands or take a shower, all the pipes gurgle. <laughs> and after a while, I could tell the difference between individual pee streams <laughs> <laughs> and whom they belong to. <laughs> and I need the top two drawers this year. Last year, I had the bottom two, and every time I went into my drawers to get some a nighty or some stockings, my dairy, I waved in the air. <laughs> no, I don't want that to happen again this year. Sure don't. <laughs> Unless there's something in it for me. <laughs> if you know what I mean. <laughs> sure don't. God, I'm going to have that image in my head for the next hour or two. <laughs> Mark, I really think we need to talk about this before the others get here. You remember last year, you, you told me I was going to be directing this year. I've got the eye for it. I've got the talent. I've got some dynamite ideas. I've been doing this show for five years. I know the characters. I know the story. You know how important this is to me. And now it seems like you're talking to Anne-Marie about script changes and new characters before you can talk to me. I did not talk to Anne-Marie. I don't know how she knew about that. So now she always seems to know things before the rest of us. And, and anyway, it, it's not the right time. Not the right time? You mean, not the right time now? Not the right time today? This week? Don't you think we should talk about this before the others get here? Don't you think they should know that I'm directing before we get started? And don't you think you should have talked to me about script changes and new characters? Not the right time to hand the directing responsibility over, Vinny. Look, you're not going to be directing the show this year. Oh. <laughs> but you promised! That was then. This is now. I, I thought it over. Oh, the part you play, Ivor, the manservant, is just too important for your attention to, to be divided that thin. The role is, is too vital for your, your focus to be stretched that way. <laughs> Maybe you're right. Hey, wait a minute! You're acting in director. Maybe uh, somebody else could be I for you. know how important this is to me? Oh, but Vinny, no one understands the character of Ivor as well as you do. You, as a student of Shakespeare, understand <laughs> the importance of understanding the character in order to portray with accuracy and and so on. <laughs> to Ivor is the key to the core of the story. Distorted body, distorted mind, entering the transitional phase from man to vampire. Oh, How could you even think of handing him over to somebody else? Your baby, your creation. Oh. Now I have to go to the dock and get my luggage. But you promised! <laughs> you are going to be so sorry, Mark Hudson. Where are you coming? I can't carry all the rest of my luggage by myself. Come along now. Oh, and when we get done with that, make sure you pick up the rest of the broken chair pieces. I swear, some of them look positively lethal. You're going to be so very, very sorry. Did you say something, Vinny? No, very important. I gotta go help Mark with his luggage. Oh, hey there, Mark. I want you to meet Later, Layla. I want you to get my luggage. Oh, the Mark is of 
Right. Something happened. I Ooh. said not now. <laughs> so, not now, James. Vinny! Oh, so good to see you! <laughs> Happy Dagger! <laughs> and Anne-Marie, I can't wait to hear what you did in the off-season. This is James Dugan. Vinny, who plays Ivor, the, uh, the, the manservant, and Anne-Marie, who's Hortense, the witchy housekeeper. <laughs> Wouldn't you just know it? Umberto canceled. He called me less than 24 hours ago to say that he couldn't play Caspian this year. And then he told me to let Mark know. He said he'd been unsuccessfully trying to reach Mark for days. And thank God I was able to recruit James here at the last minute. Huh. <laughs> J J James? <laughs> J J James? Are you crazy, Layla? I mean, look at him. He's so, uh, he's so, uh, uh, <laughs> he's so young. Don't you think he's too young? It's more like your son than your lover. Ugh. He's my top drama student at Maxwell Community College. <laughs> he played Inspector Samuels and in Hercule Poirot and the Swinging Singer this spring. Uh. And everyone who saw it said that no student had played it more convincingly. And never had another one like him, a teacher's delight. Oh, that's what he is. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm uh, not a drama student, Miss Dinsmore. I haven't picked any particular major yet. And I wasn't the inspector in that show. I was the dead guy. <laughs> <laughs> and oh yeah, my name is James Coogan, not James Dugan. <laughs> not a drama major. Not James Dugan. And you played a dead guy? Really? Are you sure? Oh, the dead guy. <laughs> <laughs> and played so very convincingly, everyone said so. <laughs> I think I'm in trouble here. He looks... young. <laughs> well, my mom said I could come. <laughs> <laughs> Your mom? Well, if his mommy said it was all right. <laughs> Just Mark... how old is he? Does Mark know? Does he even know? I'm 20. <laughs> Almost 21. Uh, Look, my mom's a little overprotective. She wasn't too happy when I got that part in Hercule Poirot. Uh, she said not to trust those actor types. She said they all do drugs, have wild, uninhibited sex, and uh, drink themselves into oblivion. Like, guess she's talking about you guys then, right? <laughs> anyway, uh, but of course, because uh, Miss Dintour's a college teacher, she trusts her. <laughs> oh, he, he looks much younger than almost 21, dude. Does Mark know? Oh, Lisa, you know how Mark likes to be involved in every decision. Even when he doesn't exactly understand what's going on. I'm not saying that Mark's incompetent, but I don't think he'd fully appreciate all the help you've been giving to this problem that's been so unfairly thrust into your lap. <laughs> and you'd think as the director, Mark would be available for last minute problems. And as the director... I called and called and he never answered his phone. As director, you should have been available. I was forced to uh, make a decision and quickly. It's not my fault. I tried to introduce him a moment ago at the talks, but Mark said he'd go down and get his luggage. Oh, crap. I was supposed to go help him. Looks <laughs> <laughs> like I'm going down to the dock. Isn't that like the name of a book or something? Down to the docks, or... Where is it? Boats, or ships? No, I can't remember. Oh, you said down to the docks, though, not boats, or... Which was it? Ships? <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell Mark all about it. I'll <laughs> move the water for you. <laughs> hey, Mr. Director, you have no idea what kind of thing I'm bringing home. <laughs> <laughs> it's a movie you're thinking of, dear. <laughs> Down to the sea of ships. <laughs> Isn't he just precious? <laughs> uh, but that isn't anything like Down to the Docks. You know there is a song about Dock of the Bay. <laughs> but I can't think of any 
have the lyrics. Does that help? Uh, no. Oh. Well, Leah, I seem to remember that last year you and Humberto shared a room. Ah. And I don't think James's mummy would appreciate oh. that this year. So, Letitia, where will he go? I, I, I've already thought of that. <laughs> Given personalities I've come to know. And love. Yeah, and love. <laughs> uh, I've already thought of who would most likely take which room. Oh. <laughs> so what does that leave? Uh, what does that leave? Oh, there's that walk-in closet. <laughs> you know, back and under the, the staircase. It, it's deep, and I think James should even be able to stand upright in it. Oh. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> a little more than fit a single bed. A very narrow single bed. A cot, actually. Yeah. Not sure about a chest of drawers. <laughs> How does that sound to you, James? You can spend the summer in a closet and <laughs> shove your things under a cot. <laughs> yeah, fine. Whatever. Anything. This has got to be better than cleaning fish down at Sing Lee's Fish Market. Ooh. I mean, this will be the first summer in two years I'm not going to smell like fish parts. Rotting fish parts. <laughs> really turns off the ladies, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Not personally. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions, James? <laughs> well, yes, I did just have one. About what? Will the uh, rest of the actors be hanging their clothes in that closet? No, dear. No, there won't be room to hang the clothes and you. <laughs> I just heard how that sounds. Don't worry, James, we won't hang you. <laughs> we'll leave that up to Mark. <laughs> Right. I, I mean, I just like privacy for sleeping and, you know, other stuff. What other stuff? Reading and just studying my lines. Oh, studying your lines. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I've really only been in one other play before Hercule Poirot. It was in the second grade, and I, I played a blue rat. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't remember what I was supposed to say, though, so the teacher changed me to a tree instead, because, you know, trees don't talk. Yeah. How that I think about it, blue rats don't talk either. It's crazy. <laughs> it's gonna be fine! He just needs a little coaching! <laughs> I really thought he would want to play the inspector. Well, just wait till Mark finds out. If Mark gives me any grief, grief over this, I will just kill him. As director, he should have been available. I, I swear I'll just kill him. <laughs> well, don't worry. Most of the times we just sort of live our part, so if you can stay in character, you'll be all right. Oh, gotcha. Stay in character. Uh, what's that mean, Miss Dinsmore? Oh, Lola. <laughs> He's gonna be fine! With a little coaching. Uh, look here, James. Uh, we have Anne-Marie to help you. Why, she's a real child star. <clears throat> a real Hollywood star. <laughs> How many movies were you in? At least a dozen. And we're so lucky to have her in our little acting group. You're going to learn so much from sharing the stage with her. Whatever you say, Miss Dinsmore. Thank you for the kind words, Lily. Yes, James. I was a star. Oh, I am a star. I've been introduced to kings and queens and presidents and first ladies all over this world. There was even a doll fashioned after me. Uh, a cabbage patch kid? <laughs> <laughs> no, James, not a cabbage patch kid. Barbie? James, Barbie has never been fashioned after anyone real. Anyone famous. My little Anne Marie doll had its own little doggies and its own little limo with its own little driver and its own little salon with its own little hairdressers and its own little studio with its own little directors. I even won a special People's Choice Award for my role in Little Anne Marie Meets Mr. T. <laughs> Shirley James, you must remember the famous line. I pity the fool who doesn't love little Anne Marie. <laughs> <laughs> I even had my own Christmas special. Did Barbie ever have that, James? I don't think so. Anne Marie! I think we better move on. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> uh, any questions, James? Yeah, uh, 
uh, where's the beach? The uh, beach? Uh, yeah, the beach. You know, for swimming, surfing, girls. <laughs> what did you tell him, Lolita? Uh, <laughs> I thought he was the one who played the inspector. Is it my fault I brought the wrong James? I played the dead guy, Mr. Smith. Well, I know that now. Uh, look, between the two of us, we'll uh, get him into shape. <clears throat> Acting. Uh, <laughs> well, I don't know. Uh, we'll, we'll come back on his lines and then... Uh, what the hell are you? My name is Emily. But you may address me by my goth name, Sister Calma. <coughs> Sister Calma? She's the Finnish goddess of death and decay. The literal translation means corpse stench. <laughs> <laughs> corpse stench? Leah, did I hear her right? Did she say corpse stench? I think that's right. Corpse stench. Oh my. Corpse stench. Well now. This could be an interesting summer after all. small so my feet and ankles stick out over the edge and I can't sleep a wink. I'm so tired there's no way I can remember all these lines. And yeah, I found out about that no signal thing yesterday too. And apparently if the storm keeps up we could lose a landline too. Well I don't like having to share a room with Anne Marie either. There's something really off about her. She started going through my things, hanging on my clothes and going through my private things. I stopped her just in time. So full of it, the great movie star. <laughs> As 
as if. Talk about somebody who's off. Speaking of which, have you met that caretaker Trasker guy yet? I saw him talking to Vinny this morning. <laughs> Add another weird crazy to this place. You know, you and I must be the only sane ones here. Tell me about it. <laughs> There's got to be some changes if I'm going to stay. Then Amory's going to drive me crazy. Says she's going to mentor me all summer. Whatever that means. I do not need her for a new best friend. I heard he was, she was some big child star or something in the movies. Never made it once she was no longer a cute kid and teenager and all that. Miss Dinsmore told me all about it this morning. Said she had some twin brother. I don't remember what she said his name was, though. Andy, I, uh, I think. He, uh, he, he died. He died or something when Anne Marie was, like, 15. Guess he was in one or two of her films, but didn't have the same charisma. Never made it like she did. Wow. Oh, and well, now her big fortune she amassed is gone. Every bit of it spent. It's like one of those stories that's supposed to make you all sad, but then doesn't really. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, she still thinks she's this big star or something. Anne Marie! I mean, I never even heard of her until I got here. How do you know about her? I have this friend who's really into old movies, and sometimes with kicks, we watch them and, like, tear them apart. It's really fun. Some of them are really bad. Just like this play we're doing here. God, this whole thing is a crock. Whoever wrote this stupid play has no idea about werewolves. I'm supposed to play a werewolf stable hand. Horses would never let a werewolf near them. <laughs> well, I don't know how I'm supposed to get through this whole summer wearing size 10 shoes. I mean, my feet are a uh, size 12. <laughs> And these pants are too short and they keep riding up in the mud. Oh, whoever wrote that zombie bit is an idiot, too. Well, I don't know how I let Miss Dinsmore talk me into this. She said, spend the summer on an island. I thought, beaches, swimming, surfing. I mean, what would you think? Mark wants me to stumble around, drooling and snarling, grabbing at the guests. I mean, I'd pay extra for that. What if one of the guests find the machete? Well, I'm supposed to kiss Miss Dinsmore on stage. How am I supposed to do that without gagging? <laughs> Everyone knows severing the head is a guaranteed way to kill a zombie. What if one of the guests really does find the machete? Whack! Whack! <laughs> Off goes my head. James? <laughs> we are truly screwed this summer. Yeah, you said it, Sister Kalma. Hello, kids! Oh! Oh, Emily, that makeup! Uh, you know, there's a mirror in the bathroom you could use when you put your face on. Uh, or I've got a makeup mirror you could borrow! It's lit up and it's magnified! Uh, I don't think she uses a mirror to put on her makeup, but doesn't need to. It's a matter of opinion, James. Anyway, you kids ready? Have your costumes gathered? Lines learned? James doesn't know any of his lines. And mine are a bunch of crap. I might change them to the truth. <laughs> well, Mark, the great director, is going to love that. James doesn't know his lines, and Emily's going to rewrite his script. <laughs> I prefer to be called by my goth name, Sister Kalma. Don't go stirring up more trouble, Vinny. Mark's already crossed because Cammy called to say she isn't coming this year. Cross? He's more than that. He's been insufferable. Anne Marie told me, in strictest confidence, that Cammy's not coming because she got a part in a TV sitcom. <laughs> and that Mark auditioned for a part in the same show and didn't get anything. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Nada. <laughs> That's why I couldn't reach him. <laughs> Anne Marie said Mark is really P.O. Cammy got a part in Mark. just as long as it looks authentic. Yeah. Authentic? What a joke! I mean, look, look at what we're wearing. Uh, Emily, I refuse 
to engage in dialogue unless I've been called by my god name, Sister Kalma. Oh, don't be tiresome. Sorry I'm late. I hope I have held anything up. Oh, it's okay. We just got started. Oh, and Marie, I think we're a housekeeper that dresses a little inappropriate. Uh, Layla, that would be my call. That dress is inappropriate for this. <laughs> oh, Mark, I just get so sick of wearing those dark, drab costumes. I want something bright and glamorous. Well, not in this scene, Anne Marie. Not at all when you're Hortense the housekeeper, really. <laughs> By the way, Vinny, those broken chair pieces need to be moved out of the dining room entirely, not just pushed against the wall. I know I mentioned this to you before. I talked to Trasker about it this morning. I didn't think I'd have to follow up with him on it. Maybe he's just waiting for the storm to clear. I'm sorry, I'll, I'll take care of it after rehearsal. See that you do. And don't just throw them outside either. Put them away in that, uh, that shed away from the house. It's got a padlock. I'm going to need a key. It's probably hanging on the back wall with the other house keys. Uh. Well, I'd like to say how excited I am to be here this season. I just love new theater challenges, don't you? <laughs> I don't know, Anne-Marie. I wasn't offered one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Vinny, you wanted to direct this year. Well, there's always next year. <laughs> Look, let's just get on with it, shall we? Now, there are some changes to go over. Umberto isn't going to be here this year to play Caspian, Cornelia Souter, and so James is taking that role. I've already adjusted his stage time and his dialogue because of his in accordance with the, <laughs> the character Caspian will not be the same this year. <laughs> and now, Emily. Sister Calma. Whatever. I've added two new characters. Milo, a werewolf, and Stefan, a zombie. It's the other way around. Milo is the werewolf and Stefan is the zombie. Whatever. Those are the changes, is everyone? Are there any questions? I understand Cammy's not going to make it because she got a part in a sitcom like you used to have. <laughs> what about her role of Ramona, who's going to play that Sister Calma? Anne-Marie is going to play both Hortense, the housekeeper, and Ramona, the upstairs maid. The parts don't overlap very much, and I'll just uh, rewrite the script a bit where they do. I get to be both a witch and a vampire! <laughs> It's a little too little. Huh? Well, yes, Carrie is a, is a tad smaller than I am, but I was thinking a panel on each side and a tummy tucking undergarment. Oh my god. <laughs> Honey, it's going to take more than that. <laughs> Saying that, Tad, that Cammy's a tad smaller than you is like saying that the Hope Diamond's a little bling. <laughs> <laughs> well, Vinny, you're so droll. <laughs> what do you think, Lorna? A panel on each side? Uh, I don't think that's going to do it. So if I just pull really hard, we'll get it close enough to get it up. Look, you ladies can make wardrobe adjustments later. We need to get rolling on lines and blocking. Mark, get over here. Maybe if I tug with both hands and you pull from the other side, we can get it close enough to get up the zipper. Can, can we just get some? Oh, 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 In character. 
to Castle Dracula. I am Count Dracula, Lord <laughs> of the Manor. Is everyone settled in their rooms? Drinks and appetizers will be served before supper. Please do not be concerned if the drinks appear a little, shall I say, blood red. <laughs> Anne-Marie, you're supposed to be in the bar getting the order book for the drinks. Oh, oh yes, I got it. Mr. Director, Count Dracula, Lord of the Castle, exit stage left! <laughs> 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 and remember, more ice, more mix, less alcohol. And be careful counting exact change, and some of the guests have said they're getting billed for drinks they haven't ordered. Have the guests initial each order. <laughs> The castle's head housekeeper, Hawkins, will fill your drink bowls while I introduce the other members of the household. This lovely child is my war, my innocent niece, Cornelia. Emily, what are you doing here? You're not even in this scene. See, Layla, uh, Layla, what does your script say? Uh, where, where are you supposed to be? <laughs> Would you please get it together? Oh. Oh, those who can't do teach, jeez. <laughs> Taking me in, sheltering at me after my parents died a tragic death. You taught me to be good and pure. And now you're gonna give my hand in marriage to the true love of my life, Caspian. And now you're gonna give my hand in marriage to the true love of my life, Caspian. <laughs> true love of my life, Caspian. Uh. <laughs> my darling Cornelia, uh, who I will love for the entirety of my life, or, sorry, entirety of my life, I thank you, Count Dracula, lord of this great castle, I promise to always hold your ward and nice <laughs> niece close to my heart and protect her forever from the evil that haunts this land. Layla, you have exactly three days, Miss Drama Teacher, to get this this disaster fixed. <gasps> yes, this is I, Vaughan, a man servant. This unfortunate man was born with a physical and mental affliction, but he is available to help you setting up movies and lead you. <laughs> Vinny, what are you doing? I'm trying to discover which Melody best suits my character. You, you, you did this last year, mixing up physical afflictions. Just pick one and stick with it for the entire show. Do do when I decide which one displays my inner pain, that's the one I'll stick with. Until then, I'll... I'm just, what the hell is that? Oh, see, that storm is right on top of us. We might lose the lights. I think I'd better go out and look for the fuse box just in case. Oh, you know, if the, the lights go in a storm, it might not be the fuse box. It might be lightning hitting a transformer. Selling nails and screws in the off season does not make you an expert electrician. <laughs> so far, the only thing you seem to be an expert at is getting in my way now. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I can find those kerosene lamps I noticed last year. We definitely need to keep this rehearsal going. Study your lines, people! <laughs>
where that fuse box is. I'm gonna go uh, look for some candles. <laughs> I saw some in the hutch in the hallway. Yeah, the hutch. Thank <laughs> you. 
That's racist. <laughs> No. Here we go, here we go, here we go. A horse walks into a bar. The bartender says, hey. And the horse says, sure. <laughs> Enjoy the sleep a week last night. The time I closed my eyes, all I saw was Mark floating in the pool with that chair leg stuck through it. I couldn't sleep last night either. No, I'm not an imbecile, Vinny. I never said you were. Well, who do you think killed Mark? I know it wasn't me. So did it have to be Tarasco, Anne-Marie, or you? Now, I know I didn't do it, and I've been thinking about this, too. Well, now you're the director. Isn't that what you wanted? Well, he embarrassed you in front of your student, in front of all of us. People have killed for less than that, Layla. Never! I would never. Could never, would never. What? You wanted to direct. I heard you arguing with him last year. I heard you. Don't you point that thing at me. Don't you threaten me with your finger. <laughs> <laughs> Stab me through this heart like you did to Mark? I'm gonna do this. Ow! Oh, hey, help me like that! Give it back! <laughs> take statements and take fingerprints and DNA. Well, I understand why they would take statements, but why DNA? You know, forensics, CSI. Oh, I didn't think about that. Checking things. Looking at things. You seem a little worried, Anne-Marie. You too, then. <laughs> you have some sort of dark secret you'd rather not come out to see the light of day? Of course not! Oh, come now. <laughs> Everyone has something they don't want to come out. Everyone has secrets. Well, I don't. I'm going to, uh, go rinse out my soiled clothes. I seem to have gotten a spot of, uh, mud on the dress I wear in the opening scene. I wouldn't do that. Police might think you're trying to destroy evidence. Uh -huh. Ooh, I can't. I think that maybe Vinny is right. You know, that's why we did what we did. I was not in complete agreement with that plan last night, and I'm not in complete agreement with this morning. I want it on the record. I did not completely agree. We did what we had to do, Layla. You're not so loud. The kids will hear. They were very upset last night. Oh, they thought Mark's death was part of the show. They thought you were playing a part, Vinny. Well, it, ha it has to be. One of us. You know that, don't you? Not necessarily. We've hardly left the house. Maybe there's someone else on the island. Someone that we don't know about. <gasps> That's right, Emery. Where is Tresker? <laughs> 
What is this storm gonna let up? Uh. <laughs> ah, ah. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to scare anybody. <sighs> what the hell are you doing? Uh, nothing, just looking for Sister Kalma. Found her! <laughs> <laughs> Strange 
one. Emily will play Ivor. He's a mute. What a jerk! He didn't even ask me. Uh, yeah, yeah, they're all really rude. Whatever. What? Uh, okay. Okay. Look. There's this little shelf in the closet I'm staying in. I wouldn't even notice it except I sat up one time and hit my head on it. Either way, look, I found this in there. Uh, there's all these uh, letters and numbers, and I, look, I think these might be dates, like a, like a month and a day, but I don't know what, I don't see anything which indicates what year. Uh, what do you think? Yeah, I don't know what these letters and numbers. AJ-BH40, ST-MP45, AJ-CC25? Does this make any sense to you? I mean, I thought the letters might be initials. Oh, yeah, yeah, that could be. Um, maybe it's the way someone kept track of the guests. Oh, it could be. I didn't think of that. James? Yeah? James, you do realize you and I are the only ones with alibis, right? You and I are the only ones that definitely did not kill Mark. Everyone else was out of this room when he was murdered. <clears throat> yeah, I know. Kind of makes you nervous to be around them, doesn't it? Then again, almost makes me nor more nervous not having them here and not knowing what they're up to. Well, I'll tell you, if anyone was smart, they'd only drink all the water, and they'd only eat food that they'd fix. Yeah. <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> We should, uh, we should get our scripts. Uh, they're in the media room, I think. Uh, yeah. Did you think it was a little weird that Anne Marie said skewered Mark? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Seems pretty cold. <laughs> Alas, poor Mark. I knew him, Horatio. <laughs> that her uncle is a vampire. Uh, page uh, 112. one of the undead for over 400 years, and your fiancé, Caspian, is a werewolf. <gasps> Vampires and werewolves cannot coexist, will not coexist, therefore I refuse to give your hand in marriage no. to my sworn enemy. <gasps> no, but I love him so. <laughs> I cannot live without him. I am certain you are wrong. So very wrong about my Caspian being one of those creatures. A man who turns into a werewolf at the full moon and tears into the throats of men, tending their crops and sheep. No! No! <laughs> I will not believe! I will never believe that of my Caspian. <laughs> Where the hell is Caspian? I'll go find him! Every <laughs> number leaves the group three on scene. I found him! <laughs> uh, sorry, we late. Had to get scripts. Uh, boy, you look kind of like Mark. Uh, sort of. Sort of. <laughs> He's not tall. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, James. We're doing the scene on page 112 where Cornelia discovers that her uncle is a vampire. Uh, James, stand a few feet behind us. There. Right. Okay. Uh, all it says is stand still and don't talk. Good! <laughs> this is the scene where she discovers I am a vampire and I have just told her 
that you are a werewolf. She denies it, denies the whole thing. Don't blame her. <laughs> <laughs> and you, Emily. Sister Calma. Sister Calma? <laughs> you are Ivor. Mute! They're still communicating with your eyes. <laughs> with your body movements. Oh, yeah? Which sides of his body are moving now? Left side, right side. <laughs> It doesn't matter! Don't yell at the poor girl. She's asking a very reasonable question. Uh, Lucy, you're disrupting the director-actor interaction. Uh, okay, maybe everybody just needs to chill out. Shut, Shut up, up, James! James. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just get on with the rehearsal. Fine, fine. No! No! <laughs> I will never believe that to my Caspian! No! I am Count Dracula, Lord of this castle and all the surrounding lands. My will will be obeyed. My will is always obeyed. Vinnie Warburton, I am going to kill you. I mean, they've known him all these years. Well, Trasker was wearing a black cape like Mark's. It was dark. Cape, therefore, it had to be Mark. I don't know why the character girl was wearing a cape, but what I'm really wondering is just who was supposed to be killed, Mark or Trasker? Nasty business, no matter which one. And that doesn't change the fact that it was somebody here who did it. I'm not buying Anne Marie's suggestion that there's some stranger on the island murdering all of us. Well. I mean, the, the storm's coming. It looks like he's going to pass on soon. We'll be able to use the landline to call the cops once it's gone. I overheard Anne Marie telling Mark that she thinks waiting for the phone lines to get fixed will take too long. She volunteered to go to the mainland because she's the only one who's piloted the cruiser before besides Trasker. Hmm, let her go, honestly. I'll feel better once the police are here and they figure out who that killer is. Speaking of killers, I really thought Mark was going to kill Benny back there. Yeah. What do you mean, locking Mark in that storage shed? Do you think it was an accident, like Vinny said? I don't know. It could be. I mean, I mean, the, the cape he was wearing probably made him invisible. At least as invisible as a real vampire. Good thing he was able to force the door off its hinges. Tell me about it. Hey, while we have the chance, let's take a look at this notebook. Yeah. It is a, it's a puzzle. Yeah, the whole damn thing is a puzzle, Sister Kalma. Uh, bet you if you don't say a thing, they won't even know we're here. Yeah, I'm not taking that bet. <laughs> <laughs> well, Lola, you sir seem shook enough. Uh, see, your reaction to his sudden return was, uh, shall I say, dramatic? When I was surprised, as were we are, but Vinny said that he was the one that found the body in the pool with the piece of chair through it. And it was Vinny who said that that was Mark. Well, we all went out to check. 
I mean, to see what the, that's what Vinny saw. And we all agreed it was Mark. Well, we didn't I, stay out there very long because the storm was fierce, but... Well, I couldn't really see who it was. I just took Vinny's word for it. Oh. Well, Layla, I want you to go through this stack of DVDs, oh. make a list of times and dates for each movie to be shown, and make sure that each season of Undercover Sasquatch is the daily feature. <laughs> I'm in no mood for the kind of squabbles guests get into over these things. Okay. Oh, Mark, you need to rest. Oh. You're getting sick from being in that cold, damp shed for hours. No time to rest. Guests can start arriving in two days. Not likely, but we need to be prepared just in case. The police won't let anyone on the island until the investigation is complete. That's a good point. Wouldn't have thought her capable of such a reason. <laughs> well, I'll go and make some movie schedules and post a sign-up sheet for the pool table. Mark! Mark, would you like some tea? Oh, yes. I just still can't believe that Vinny locked you in that shed, and it's amazing to me that he didn't see you in there. Oh, hi, Vinny. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I'm sorry. I was just getting rid of pieces of the chair. That door was unlocked when I got there, so I made sure it was locked when I left. I was throwing pieces of chair in there. I didn't know that you were looking for the kerosene lantern. I didn't know I hit you on the head with a chair leg. I'm sorry. <laughs> Watch the alcohol consumption, Vinny. Save some for the guests. Take it out of my paycheck, Mr. Director. Or better yet, I'll replace it when we can get off this rock. Uh, I don't think we should be wandering off alone with a killer on the loose. We've already... Grieve your demise once, Mark. I don't want to do it again. <laughs> Mark, what do you think the production company is going to do about the rest of the run? Well, I, I, I think we should <clears throat> proceed on the assumption that we're going to go on as scheduled. Besides, we won't get much rehearsal time once the cops get here. Great plan! I want to tell you I'm behind you 100%, boss. Proceed as if we're, as if we're going to proceed. Yes! <laughs> Suck up to the boss. Well, Mark, I want to be the first one to tell you I'm behind you. 150%. I'm so happy that you're doing better, and we're just so happy all the sacrifices that you've made for us. Hey, look, it's suck-up number two. <laughs> then I want to say I support you 200%. <laughs> suck-up number three. I wasn't finished, Lois. <laughs> <laughs> I, as a child actor, knew what it meant to have to go on. No one could fill in for me and Marie. So I've decided I'll volunteer to go on as the Countess, should you be unable to go on as the Count. Now, wait a minute, this former Hollywood star. Here it comes. It's a very good plan, Vinny. It's a very stupid plan, Anne-Marie. There'll just be a few script changes, a few pronouns switched here and there, Vinny. There's no costume for a Countessa, and Marie. I would wear the black gown that I wear as Hortense, Vinny. Vampires are usually stick thin, Anne Marie. <laughs> <laughs> well, my black gown and costume jewelry gives me a grand Countess look, Vinny Warburton. Well, it's my cape, Anne-Marie Johnson, and I'm not going to let you wear it. <laughs> you got to talk about the notebook. Well, I think the two of you should butt out. I hardly think. That's the problem. You hardly think. Oh, I never. Uh, that's, a, that's a fresh line. That's enough. Uh, you. All of you, just shut up. Look, our focus now has to be on our performance. You're absolutely right, boss. All right. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go to our rooms, we're going to pick up costumes. I think... Don't. Just listen. This is what we're going to do. But... No, no argument. Mark. No discussion. Yes. We go to our rooms, we pick up costumes, we come back here and rehearse. We'll go together. <sighs> no! You're a weasel, Vinny. I thought going to make the right decision, and it's oh, me. You're not going to be the lead actor, Anne Marie Johnson. You're both being immature, cock-a-heads. Oh, skin faces. I'm rather your glue. <laughs> oh, my God. Those are adults. I 
he had to give me a break. But hey, something came to me while we were being entertained by the uh, terrific threesome there. Uh, I was about the journal. I ugh, uh, came to me when Vinny said Anne Marie's last name. Uh, look at the initials here. A J. That could be Anne Marie Johnson. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I can see that. And I thought these initials here could be a record of the guests. Well, of course, the guest registry is at the bar. Oh, the electricity's back on. That's that's good. Oh, come on, hurry up. Let's look these over and see if they match. Okay. Oh, 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 oh. look, they do match. Yes. Um, I don't, and look, I, I wonder what Trasher's first name is, or was, and I still don't know what all these numbers mean. It's got to be about the money, James. It's all about the money. What money? Uh, the alcohol overcharges. Yes, yes, and petty thievery, too, I bet. Uh, maybe getting into purses and wallets while the guests were down here for a performance. Of course. Look, this is a record of which one got how much. Anne Marie, $30 from HD. Trasker, $15 from BB. Trasker again, $20 from CH. Looks like as time went on, Trasker was getting more of the money. Right, and of course those amounts could just be passed over by the guests as drinks they didn't remember ordering. Or the money they spent on the mainland when they went shopping. Yeah. The individual amounts are pretty small, but over time they could really add up. Look, um, during this one week, they got a total of $173. If you multiply that by 12, you've got... Um, it's over $2,000. It's not bad. Well, yeah, but it's hardly enough for Trasker's murder to be a falling out between two thieves. I guess you're right. <sighs> Do you think that would work? If, uh, if the lights go out again, then Ivor... Ivor comes out with a candelabra. I think it's a wonderful idea, uh, Vinny. Uh, uh, Art imitating life. Yes. Or is it the other way around? <laughs> well, well that's, what's a good idea? I don't like plans being made without my involvement. Uh, we're not doing that. We're just tossing around some yeah. ideas. Yeah. And look, the lights are on. Ah, hurry! <laughs> Phone's still out. Uh, uh, Damn, I really need to get hold of my agent. I mean, the agency. Uh, let them know what's going on this week. And the cops? The cops need to be called first. Of course, of course, the cops. I made a decision. I am going to get the cruiser, and I'm going to captain it to the mainland. I don't think that's a good idea, Henry. Are you sure the cruiser's up to the trip? I think the hole is deep enough that it won't go over in rough waters. We would be absolutely... Uh, Devastated if we lost you, Henry. Absolutely devastated. Yeah, me too. <laughs> no, no, you're not taking the cruiser, Anne Marie. That's final. I'm going to the ladies' room. Diva. Mm. Oh, always a diva. Absolutely right, boss. Jeez, what kind of suck up was that? I've lost track of all the sucking going on around here. <laughs> all right, everybody, be quiet. I'll try the phone one more time. <laughs> hey! We got a dial tone! Oh, 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 it's a good thing Anne Marie didn't leave! It's an excellent thing that Anne Marie didn't. What the hell is that? That's the cruiser starting up! Damn! Double damn! Oh, she's so brave! Oh, she's just so brave! She's just so brave. <laughs> Something's not right here. Uh, I discounted her. I, I, she's, she's much braver than I would have thought. I can't see Anne Marie in the role of heroine. Oh, she's just so brave, putting her life on the line for us. You're so brave! <laughs> Our hearts go with you, Anne Marie. Vaya con Dios, my friend. Vaya con Dios, mi amiga. Oh, well, <laughs> God, isn't that what she said? Yes. Si. <laughs> I didn't know you were bilingual. Vaya con Dios, Anne-Marie, vaya con Dios. Oh, Mark, Anne-Marie's just so brave. Oh, stuff it. She made off with all the cash. Huh? It looks like she rifled through the staff bedrooms to get whatever else she could make off with. And it's not Anne Marie, it's Andy, her twin brother. Uh, Anne Marie's been dead for decades. Anne Marie dead? Yeah, you know how those child stars end up. Drugs, alcohol, sex scandals, you name it, Anne Marie was into it. Andy was her stand-in during filming. He knew exactly how to imitate Anne Marie. 
How do you know? I never heard of Anne-Marie dying. No, I knew them years ago. I was just starting my career, and Anne-Marie's star was already fading and fading fast. Her family and agent kept it quiet when she OD'd. If there was any occasional media curiosity, Andy would appear as Anne-Marie. Or her agent kept the rumor going that it was Andy who had OD'd. I can't believe it. She's not going to rescue us. She's running away. What? I can't believe it. Little Anne Marie. It has to be Anne Marie. Holy crap. I knew there was something off about her. I can't believe it. Well, I don't want to believe it. Wait, 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 wait. She's coming back. The boat's coming back. <laughs> we'll go get her. Hell no. She's a murderer. <laughs> <laughs> you, you go. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, she's at the dock. She's walking up the dock. She's walking into the house. I couldn't get the boat 15 feet from the dock. It was out of gas. Where's the money, Andy? Where's the money? <laughs> Why? Well, no offense, Mark. But I didn't mean to kill Trasker, I meant to kill you. <laughs> it was that damn cape Trasker was always wearing the cape, pretending to be Count Dracula, Lord of the Castle, when you guys weren't around. With me? Why'd you want to kill me? You said you were going to do away with little Anne Marie because of the work she was doing with Trasker. You are going to kill me, Mark. Well, not literally, like I was going to kill you, but I couldn't do that to Anne Marie's fans. My devoted fans, Mark! <laughs> How was it going to hurt you, Anne Marie? I could never do that! But you said! You said you were going to because of the work I was doing with Trasker! And I couldn't let you do that to little Anne Marie! You misunderstood! I said you had to do away with that scam that you and Trasker were pulling! Oh, I could never do away with you, Anne Marie! Andy, I needed Anne Marie. I still need her. You! Look, the only way that the theatrical agency could sell this show to the owners was to have a name attached. Turns out the owner's wife is a huge fan of little Anne Marie. Oh! You're the star! Oh! I'm so glad I killed Trasker instead of you! He's horrible, Ma! <laughs> and then it's true. You and Trasker were stealing from guests, uh, overcharging, uh, billing for drinks they didn't order. James, that was small stuff compared to what Trasco was really doing. He was putting hidden cameras in the guest bedrooms. Mark, I thought you had caught me when I first got here. I looked through your letters of instruction and I had headed upstairs to find the best places for the cameras. He was going for blackmail. Big time. Blackmail? Big time! <laughs> Do you think that those married guests came with their spouses? How naive are you? Uh, of course, it was footsteps up and down the stairs the first night. Traska didn't know you were using that room, the closet as a bedroom. Somebody has got to call the police. Yeah. And the, and the, the agency. Mm -hmm. They're telling them there's going to be a delay getting up this week. Goodbye, Emery. Goodbye, my beautiful sister. <coughs> Goodbye! I love you, Andy! <coughs> I love you too, Anne Marie. Farewell. But it's also sad. It's sadder when we have to give up this gig. Yeah, we won't be able to go on without Anne Marie. Vinny Warburton, Vampire <laughs> Island Theater. The one to report a murder. Yes, the caretaker, Seth Trasker. Oh, two days ago. We couldn't call you because we lost the phone when we lost the power in the storm. <laughs> Do we know who did it? <laughs> no. No, we don't. 
we think there might be a stranger on the island. <laughs> and we feel safe as long as we stay together and in the house. You'll come as soon as you can. All right. Thank you. <laughs> she's still in the house I had to leave <laughs> <laughs> and I'm pretty sure that the hardware store is gonna lay me off at the end of the summer me too I mean I'm not getting laid off I I actually lost my job a couple months ago oh. lost my job car was repossessed lost my apartment lost my girlfriend oh Mark I'm so sorry you know how devoted you were to that car <laughs> <laughs> I'm sort of in the same boat. I'm sick of teaching untalented kids. Sorry, James. <laughs> and the community college is rumors circling that they're going to cut funding to the fine arts in order to funnel more into math and science. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine pushing the dramatic arts into a closet? <sighs> Sorry, James. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, it's not like we condone taking the law into our own hands. But, uh, boy, that Trasker, he was, uh, he was, uh, he was a bastard. Yeah. Terrible. Yes. Terrible, she terrible, was, terrible. Was. I always said so. <laughs> I mean, we are law-abiding citizens. Black soul. Oh, <laughs> and he had a black soul. <laughs> And it still would never occur to us to be judging. No, 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 no. citizens, that's us. Ooh, I like that, Mark. Judge and jury. I like that, judge and jury. So, Anne-Marie? Does Anne-Marie live? Of course! Yeah. 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 You two are not going to say anything, you understand? Not a thing. Anne-Marie lives. <laughs> All right. Well, we, we, we've got a few minutes before the police get here. Let's go in the dining room and plan our strategy. Oh, Martin. How do you feel about extending the run into the fall? We're unnatural for Halloween. Oh, or Christmas. I can decorate the tree with little vampire ornaments and put coffin-shaped presents underneath. I can see it now. Oh, yeah. I've always thought our show would be a good fit for Easter. <laughs> Vampires and Jesus are both undead. <laughs> well, I, I guess we, we should really put our heads together and make a plan to run the show the whole year. Right? But Anne-Marie, no more funny business. You do in one more person, and we're going to have to turn you in. You understand? I understand. Really, murder is the most disgusting activity. I've been really put off by the whole thing. It's, it's icky. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right. Well, then, then, then let's go in the dining room and, and really strategize. Okay, Ross. Well, let's start with my Christmas idea. <laughs> no, 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 no. We have to follow the calendar, Layla. How do we come before Christmas? I think we should start with Christmas. It'll be the bigger seller. <laughs> follow the calendar, Layla. Halloween, start with something small. Build on that. Like the Halloween show. Mark, I think we should start with Easter. I would look fabulous in an Easter bonnet. <laughs> oh. <laughs> You're crazy. Certifiably crazy, every single one of them. I wouldn't trust the Henry as far as I could throw her. Yeah, neither would I. I'm sure something else will happen before the summer's over. Tell me about it. And not just Anne Marie, too. Every single one of them. Uh, batty as hell. Yeah. Look. Oh. You know, I think we'll be okay, though. We aren't important enough to any of these people. I guess you're right. Still, I gotta say, this summer's turned out way more interesting than I thought it would be. Well, hey, you're certainly right about that. Way more interesting. <laughs> but, um, hey, do you want to go to the mainland to 
pick up some snacks? <laughs> I am starving. Excellent idea. <laughs> <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.